What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Matt Brill here to tell you guys about my friends from Big Friendly Productions. Now, they specialize in creating merchandise for bands, artists, and even lifestyle brands. With their in-house equipment, they can provide shirts, branded hats, and more, as well as some graphic design services. They offer order fulfillment to handle your online orders and ship your merch straight to your fans from their shop. Down in good old Birmingham, Alabama, baby. Now, whether you are getting your first shirt, you're just starting out, or you're going on a 40 show run, Run, hit them up for all your merchandising needs. Check out their website, bigfriendlyproductions.com, or shoot them an email, merchandising at bigfriendlyproductions.com. Now we're going to get into the episode. This is Outside the Round with Matt Brill. Also, make sure you guys like, rate, subscribe, tell your mama and them. And for more details and uh, to get in touch with the rest of the familia, visit raiserowdy.com. Now let's get into it. Outside the Round with me, Matt Brill, a Raised Rowdy podcast. This is Outside the Round with Matt Burrill for Rage Rally Podcast. What's going on, everybody? Um, It is CMA week, or as the locals here call it, fanfare. And um, we are exhausted. The week hasn't even started. And today we've got a really cool episode with a guy that I consider like my little brother. I'd say he's my protege, but he's doing way better than I've ever done in the touring world. He's I wouldn't a say that. Goddamn um, Swiss Army knife. It's my boy <laughs> Brennan Cato. What's up, dude? Doing good. And uh, I appreciate you. You're the first guest that I've had that has fed me. <laughs> so I appreciate <laughs> Gotta take you. Take care sh- of the boys. I appreciate you showing up with Chick fil A biscuits. Absolutely. It was no um, Chick fil A sauce, but. No Chick fil A sauce, okay. but that is that is what is which one which one do you go to? Do you go to the one in Hermitage? Hermitage, baby. Hermitage, that's where I usually go to, right there by Las Palmas. And yeah. The bargain hunt and yeah, dude. Electronic a, Express. They got all the it's good It's a one stop shop over there. Yeah, I still prefer Chick fil A over going to Whataburger, even though Whataburger's across the street, dude. Yeah, dude you, how long you waited in line for that shit, yeah, right? Dude, like when like, it first came out? Yeah, like one AM, go there with the boys. Just like 30, 40 minutes wait in line. Bro, I remember when it was like an hour during the day. Uh, I never did that. When it first opened up, it was crazy. I never now. went like when it first opened. I'm really not even a big Whataburger guy. I'm not either. I'm really not. If I, I get crucified for it by my Texas friends and guys like Mitch Wallace, which Mitch Wallace appreciate you sponsoring the show. But I love you, Mitch. You're, you're, you're tasting food. He eats like a, he has like the pickiest taste. Yeah, pickiest ever. I've been on the road with Mitch. I know. I yeah, know he's, about like, Mitch he's like a damn fifth grader. <laughs> You know, it's 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 funny, but now there's Raising Cane's just opened up. Did you see that? Yeah. Have you been that We've made a few trips over there as well. Over in West Nashville already? No, there's a Cane's in um, Smyrna. Well, there's the one in Smyrna, but there's the one here that's in like oh, they the, west, the west side. Yeah. No, I and apparently there's just been well, opened like last week or something or like the uh, other day and it's just I been didn't know lines. About that. Yeah, I just found out about the other I found out through through Boudreaux, through Tyler. All the big guys in my <laughs> life, the large I, I associate myself with a lot of large humans and they give you good food taste, you know, like For sure. it's just the shit ton of it, man. But dude, like CMA week's just like literally just getting started. Yeah, we're and I'm like, already exhausted. We're two days into the week. We had our first event last night. Uh, Raise Rowdy Premium, which was awesome. I'm yeah, still. Dude, I didn't in the get same... to stop by. How was it? It was good, man. I'm still in the same fucking clothes that I was wearing last night. That's how long. <laughs> That's where my day's at, bro. That's like, how you I'm... know it was a good night then. It was. It was a very good night. Love you, Aaron. Um, but uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, it was a good. It was a good night. Um, but it was just like like running a business now is like doing the Raise Rowdy thing. It's just it's a lot, oh, you know. For sure. Like, I'm used to doing just the personality thing and then working on Trey's team with doing the TM stuff, like what you're getting to do now with Drayton and doing the day-to-day stuff and, like, all that shit. But I'm busier now and have less free time than I ever have yeah, I'm running a fucking business. So much that go, like, goes on behind the scenes that people don't know about. And then all the work you put in just to, you know, have a show or have a writer's round or whatever you may have. Bro, so much time, just, so much meeting teamwork you. so much dude everything. and to grow you need like content is so key so important especially nowadays man it's crazy and to do that you have to it fucking so schedule it you have to have the budget out because you get what you pay for you for know sure. like you you need if you want that high quality content it comes with a cost like and the guys that we mainly use at raise rowdy are are we call them our, our content god and our content prince we have 
um, Lord Lord Hunter Lewis, um, our content god, and then we've got Ike, our Sir, Sir, Ike. Sir Ike, who's just a fun... Shout out to Ike, dude. You're the goat. Ike and Jerry, man. They're funny. They're good. They're fun. They're funny dudes, and you've been doing the content thing for a while. That's kind of how you got your start with mm-hmm. working in music and entertainment, right? Yeah, dude. I got my start in uh, 2019. I got a camera for Christmas of December of 2018. When I was in college. Um, fast forward like three months, I started messaging rappers because uh, I grew up in uh, Douglasville, Carrollton, Georgia. Shout out. <laughs> um, but Atlanta was like an hour away, so I was DMing rappers and like going to studio sessions and shows and just learning how to like use a camera. Fast forward like six, seven months after that, I met you in yeah. Carrollton with Noah Hicks, Drew Parker, and Muscadon. Yeah, that was fun. Um, that was what, awesome. What was that experience like of like your first? What's what's the first rap shoot that like Baby Brendan is going on from <laughs> Dude, I'm like, small town country suburban Georgia into the the ATL where you're you're in that. You're going into that life that you've you've seen about, and you've known about, but you've never like been in. What's what was that first shoot like? Like working with rappers and shit. It was like just eye opening, dude. Like these, I didn't realize that like that was the first time I ever heard of like somebody being a songwriter, like somebody like songwriting and not like actually singing a song too. Because there were so many people in there, and they were trying to finish. Uh, dude, I can't even remember who it was. Was I, it in a studio? Yeah, it was in a studio it was somewhere in uh, I think Buckhead, Buckhead, uh, North Atlanta. But dude, I was like 19. We would go like three or four days a week. Um, I remember when I was 20 years old, dude, when it kind of like felt surreal. We uh, did a behind the scenes for Slim Jimmy. It was crazy. We're all like 19, 20 years old, just trying to learn how to shoot a camera. There for like three or four hours, not really getting paid anything. Just kind of working for free and like building a catalog. Damn. That was pretty cool. Yeah, has it been like kind of a, a interesting, because you've gotten to see different styles of music. Oh, yeah. Like, it's definitely it, been like... It's all still Southern, which is kind of cool, you being a Southern guy. Like, yeah. that that's cool that For it's sure. like what you grow up listening to in Georgia is, it's there is the rock element, but it's a lot of country, and then it's 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 hip-hop. You grew up listening to T.I. and Outkast, but you also grew up listening to Jason Aldean and Luke Bryan. Like, yeah. that's part of... Growing up where you grew Very up. Very versatile, for sure. Like, yeah. I have a lot of friends that, like, strictly listen to rap. I have a lot of friends that strictly listen to country. And then, like, me, I listen to... I could get in the car and listen to rap and then listen to country right after, no problem. Yeah. But, yeah, it's... Uh, and then moving up here from doing, like, all the rap music stuff, um, dropping out of college, having to get a job, and then moving up here, it was just, like, a 360 spin. The ind- Like, country industry is so much different than the rap industry. Like How so? Everyone's more genuine here. Like, everyone is, <clears throat> like, trying to, like, work as a team, and, like, get to the next level. As, like, what I saw in, like, the hip-hop scene was, like, everyone's kind of greedy. Like, everyone's, like, one person is wanting to make it. So no one's really, like, putting in that teamwork together that you see up here a lot. Yeah, it's just, it's that, that cutthroat yeah. kind of, like, streets mentality, you know? Literally. It's crazy. It make, makes sense. So who was the first country artist that you kind of started working with? Um, dude, crazy enough, the first country, <clears throat> the <clears throat> first country concert I ever did, um, it was me, I was shooting photos for free, um, I DM'd Jeb Gibson. Uh, oh, no shit. Yeah, I love Jeb. On Instagram. Good uh, people. I saw a flyer that came out and it was like, uh, Morgan Wallen was playing at, uh, Phoenix City Amphitheater, 2019, like a week or two after Easter. Uh, Jeb was opening and there was somebody else playing that like wasn't on the flyer. So I would like drive uh, there from my house. It's like two hours, get out, get all my cameras, just go into security, tell them who I'm there for, find Jeb. That was the first time I'd met him in person too. So I just drove, met him there. We were walking in the back and we passed like all these buses in the line and it was Hardy and Morgan. They were like 15, 20 feet away maybe. I like we didn't, I didn't meet him or anything. Yeah. It was just like a surreal moment. Like, wow, this is crazy. Yeah. Like this is really happening. It was a cool show, dude. I got, like, great photos. Uh, got to meet Jeb, stayed in touch with him. Still stay in touch with him. Yeah, he's good people. He's awesome. He's a Georgia boy. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's half of the fucking population here. <laughs> that's what Georgia it feels boys. like, dude. That's like last night we did um, with our, our Rage Rowdy Premium. We had three three guys from Georgia. Yeah, because Andy, Aunt Timothy's from Kentucky. Andy's from North Carolina dance from Ohio, so none of them were from Georgia. But we had Noah Hicks, or hometown guy, being a proud Carrollton guy. Um, Noah, we had Brian Fuller, and we had this Landon Smith kid who's 
was, I think, going to be fucking massive. Hell yeah. Um, he goes to school in Statesboro, has that, that Zach Bryan kind of vibe, but has the, the Georgia Southern hospitality to him as well. And he's 19. The kid's so green and name and funny, but he's so fucking good. Yeah. But there's just this fraternity of Georgia guys and girls. Like, you see it with, like, folks like folks like Lauren Elena, like Meg Maroney, like Mackenzie Carpenter. Like, there are a lot of Georgia <laughs> girls, too. But For sure. It's like you're part of a fraternity. Like, it's go dogs, go yeah. Braves. It's definitely a good conversation starter when you meet somebody new and they're from the same you know, state. It's yeah. Like with you, if you meet anybody from New York, there's just yeah. so much to talk about. Yeah, my boy Aiden Canfield, like him and I, yeah. him and I bond very well together. And Matt Mulher and like different folks that are that are northeastern people having that that regional similarity because all the southern states are fucking different. Yeah, they you know, are. They, they sure. are. They That's are one thing different. I've learned from tour in the past year. Yeah, they're all way different. Like, uh, like growing up in Georgia, even though it's you can grow up right on that that Columbus Georgia line, not like. Not a far stone's throw away from Auburn, Alabama. Yeah. Auburn, you cross that Bama line, it's different. Just <laughs> yeah, like if you're in Bama, different. you cross in the Georgia line, and it's And you go different. to Mississippi, and it's ten times different. Oh, and then you get into Louisiana and Arkansas, yeah. and you're like, what the fuck? I thought I was in the South. But each state has their own kind of subculture within it. For sure. Which is cool. Like, where's, like, Drayton's, um, you're working with Drayton Farley right now. It's your full-time gig, which yeah, I'm so awesome. fucking proud of you, dude. Like, Thank you. From... First meeting you and long hair Noah. Let us let us know. Yeah, Noah dude. Noah Hicks with his Noah had dude, it was down to like here. At one yeah, point. yeah. Like you've got what I what I call the 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 southern but you are you are a you went you are a frat. Yeah. That that to me, I mean, a part of me and I'll get I'll get a little trouble for I'll get in a little bit of trouble for I I think of that as the as and I'm not saying this is necessarily you. I just generalize I like to generalize shit. I'm from New York. I'm a bit of an asshole. I refer to that little bit of hair as like a fuckboy flow. That to me is southern fuckboy flow. <laughs> I have seen, and it's I think like Drayton would agree with you. And it's like a seasonal thing. It's a seasonal thing because I've seen, and it tends to be guys from Georgia. I'm not going to say any names, but you can see like guys move to town <laughs> and the, the flow just grows a little bit. It just goes, and most of it stays like Paxton's got it, for example. You know, it's, it's like a confidence, like swaggy kind of thing. It's like not quite a mullet, <laughs> but like it's getting it, there. It's, it's on the spectrum, you know? For sure. But, like, so Noah had the long hair. You had really short hair at that point. You were mm -hmm. just a little damn, damn baby. How old were you when we first met? 19. You were 19, yeah. So you, had, you hadn't even done the – you had just started doing content for people, right? Or not even. Yeah, not – I mean, really not even. <clears throat> I'd probably shot, like, a few shows with Noah because um, that was in October of 2019. Yeah. I remember. Uh, that was at the Amp in Carrollton, Georgia. Yep. Um, but, yeah, dude, probably, like, four or five shows before that. Yeah, which is which is wild, really and liked. and then how long after that it was? What it was coming out of COVID, right? When that we, show we had launch. No, when we had launch. Oh yeah, coming out of COVID. So that was what twenty one. Twenty one. Yeah, so I'd already right been before, with Trey. I think the, February of 20, 21, maybe. Yeah, because I was doing rounds because you shot around like while you were up here on that mm -hmm. trip, and then I moved up like four months later. Yeah, but I remember sitting down with you and being like, "Hey, this is." what you need to do to get here. You were like, I want to find an internship. I want to do this. I want to do that. Which did you end up doing the, did you end up finishing college or like, no, no dude. We, uh, so I was like prioritizing all the camera work and networking on Instagram. over yeah, everything. You were like, you were like, bro, how do I do this? But yeah, not, not, not disappoint the fam and get this degree that I'm almost done with. Yeah. I, w I wasn't almost done. I was, how much did you have to go? I was probably like halfway done, maybe. Yeah. Um, I was in it for four semesters. Yeah, so about two years. And that was West West Georgia? University of West Georgia. Yep. Um, but I was just prioritizing the camera work and like networking, um, just like with what I wanted to do over schoolwork. Like, I don't know, it just felt right. And like, I, like, I just felt like I found my passion like really early on. So I just priorita prioritized that. Um, grade started to plummet. Mom and dad weren't too happy uh, at the time. Now they they love what I do. They come out to shows. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. But yeah, it's crazy. Dropped out of school and then just moved up here on a wing. Kind of just took some of your advice and other people's Because I remember advice. we were sitting on a party foul and we, we had the uh, the piggy chips and the beignets and all the good shit. We were sitting on that little, like, um, in the back and to the left. I remember us sitting there and talking and... You just asking me shit and me trying to figure out what to say because I'm I'm still figuring it out to this day and I've been here <laughs> almost five fucking years, um, but to see you from at that point 
to coming up to finding friends and people that you believe in to like working like finding i told you it's so important to find your crew of people and yeah, dude. i've gone through multiple crews of people being here like the crew that i had when i was bouncing at whiskey row was different than the crew that i was hanging out with late 2019 before covid the early part of COVID, I had I was hanging out with another crew, and then I started playing kickball, and I found another crew. Jeez. And now it's like, like you just meet different people and shit, you know. But it's mm -hmm. important to find at least like a group of people, a group of guys or girls or whatever that you that you you, you, you fuck with, you know, yeah, that, that you enjoy hanging with, you enjoy having some beers with, you enjoy having a little smoke with, you enjoy going arounds with. You have a big group chat, you know, and yeah, for sure, you guys have that. Shout out you, to the boys, yeah, dude. And you have such a great charismatic crew of of artists of writers of personalities of musicians of guys that do what you do on the crew side or what, what we do on the crew side like it's it's so cool to see that to then to watch you do that then to watch you work with artists like within that crew like paxton and like connor and like hunter and everybody in that in that crew to now you're fucking working with is drayton drayton signed right uh, no, Drayton is independent. He's independent, independent. right now. Okay. Uh, booking through CAA. But a, but a guy with a booking deal, like you're on the team, like you're, you're right hand on the road, you're full-time oh, yeah. TMing, on big tours with acts that you've probably grown up listening to. Yeah, dude. Playing fucking sheds, playing fucking festivals. Like you're, you're doing the damn thing. So it's so cool to see in the span of two years that first sit-down we had to where you're at now, bro. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, dude, lives came very fast. Uh, two years ago, yesterday or the day before, uh, was the day I packed everything up and moved here. Yeah. So t ev everything that's happened, dude, has just been, like, it's awesome. Uh, I didn't have no music business background. I didn't, like, go to – that wasn't what I was studying in college. Yeah, well, you were a business kid, I'm guessing? Uh, I was just undecided. Oh, so you really didn't want to fucking be yeah. there. Not, <laughs> I mean, I did it first, for sure. Um but no, dude, I was just in, in there undecided. just figuring out Ma what I wanted Majoring to do. in Greek. I started out in criminology, yeah. and then I went to undecided, and that's what I f yeah. finished with. You, ma you majored in Greek life. Yeah, literally. Majored in Greek life, which is a big part of the – that leads you to working in entertainment. That, le that leads you to knowing how to put out fires, how to, how to clear out the house so the cops For don't sure. come, how to make sure that there isn't – like how to – how to break up a fight, how to keep, how to handle multiple personalities in a closed space. Absolutely. That's what being in a fraternity or a sorority kind of is, Dude, which trains you for being in a, being out with a band and having a rowdy group of friends, you know? Yeah. College definitely taught me those things. I think the, like the number one thing it taught me was how to like interact with people, like how to go up to somebody you've never met and just, you know, have a conversation with them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, cr it's crazy. And to keep a level head. Definitely, because that's and, something that I've I've struggled with, and that was one of my downfalls when I was tour managing. Was my pop pop always used to tell me, or as you southern folks like say, your pop pop, um, <laughs> a pop pop, my pop pop, yeah, um, which is the northern way of pop pop. Um, but um, he would always tell me, you want to be cool, you want to be calm, and you want to be collected. And those are like the three C's that were always so important, which is funny because he had a temper. He used to get thrown out of little league games, like for because he, he like yelling or like being in the crowd, whatever. So I definitely get some of that from him. But I I didn't have that all the time when I was on the road. And I think if I had had that experience earlier on, like being in the being in the frat and being around the different person, doing all that stuff, that might have helped me. But I'm also just like you're very. When I think of you, I think. Very chill. Obviously, you don't fuck with you. You don't get walked over, but like you, you keep a very nice demeanor to where yeah. you're not worrying the room. You know, like which is a great quality to have as a as a tour manager, as a road manager, any of that stuff. You know. Yeah, I've just noticed, dude. Like being on the road, even before I like started full man uh, tour managing full time, when I was going out with Paxton and doing photos and content, um, we just you go to so many different places and. There's so many different types of people, and it costs zero dollars to be a nice person. Yeah. So if you're going to three or four different states in one week, and you know everybody's tired, everybody in the camp's tired, everybody's ready to go home, everybody's ready to sleep in their own bed. Um, you know, a lot of people can tend to you know feel a certain type of way towards the end of the run or when you leave, and it's just about you know managing personalities. It's like a big thing you told me way back when. That's always stuck in my head. If you can figure out how to manage like that guy's personality, he's gonna get mad at something this guy doesn't get mad over. 
and it's going to be a big deal about this guy. Uh, and the other guys, it's not going to be a big deal. Yeah. So it's just figuring out all the how to make everything kind of work together. But you just got to keep a smile yeah. on your face. Yeah. What was it like being in the trenches with Paxton? Do you still go out <laughs> and do dates with him if you're not out with Drayton? Or yeah, absolutely. What's what? What is what is that dynamic like? Because obviously, like you, you've lived with these guys here in town, but you've also but like that level of touring. That is a level of touring I've never done. I I got in, I got lucky where my first touring gig was in a fucking sprinter with an established duo, Musk and I'm Bloodline, and then yeah. with Trey after he had a song go Billboard number one. So I got kind of spoiled to not be at the cover gigs, to not be at the where like guys having to share beds and a fucking the bass players sleep in the bathtub and the content guys sleeping on the floor in the bathroom like what Bonner and McElwain and, and those guys used to do with Trey back in the day. You were in those in that in those trenches with Paxton and with Connor. Connor of course had the Do you guys have a name for that? Yeah, it's called Redneck Express. The Redneck Express. He has a that, sprinter now though, but we st- yeah, he's he still a sprinter has it. now. The Redneck Express, yeah, yeah, which we uh, might have to hit up, hit you guys up for the Redneck Express. Can we imagine Nikki T and I rolling up to festivals in the Redneck awesome, Express. Dude. That Y'all would should be, definitely do that. Does it have AC? Uh, yeah. yeah. It's not the best, but it has something. It. <laughs> it's better than tent camp. Yeah, it's definitely better than the windows down. Okay, that's good. Sure. Um, but you were in the, in the you, and you guys went, you weren't just a Southeast regional. I remember you guys, you guys went out to Kansas City. Yeah, we played you that guys, tin roof circuit out there. You guys bounced around to a few different places. What was that experience like for you? Dude, those shows are always like, they're either really fun or they're really not. Um, but for the most part, they're always really fun to me. Uh, it's, it's like going from places you pull up, have no idea what it's going to be like, and it's like a people are eating dinner in here. Sketch, sketchiest, Sketchy places. There's yeah. 50 people in there. Yeah, Everyone's ske- sketchiest drunk. settlement you had. You don't have to say the, you don't have to say the name of the venue, but you can say like the town. Do you remember like Tupelo, Mississippi, Tupelo. Tupelo I haven't done Tupelo. That's a place I never did. We walked into this place and there was literally people eating dinner and smoking cigarettes at the same time. Sigs inside. And these people were dressed nice too. And I was like, dude, this is going to be rowdy. Um, but yeah, uh, those shows really, dude, have, like, just kind of helped me get to where I am now for sure. Yeah. Like, just kind of seeing the vision through, seeing, like, knowing it's, like, we're going to get to this next level. Um, but just implementing everything that we still do now then, like, I would make day sheets then. Yeah, what happened, would, in, what happened in Tupelo that it was, like, so sketchy aside from just southern folks? Oh, I was just saying, like, in cigarettes. Tupelo, dude, it, like, it wasn't even just different. Where I'm from, you don't go into a restaurant that has like a stage and smoke cigarettes in there while you're eating dinner with your family. And then what you kind had, of dinner were they eating? Like it was good food. Like they had steaks there. They had like burgers, chicken. They had everything. Like I'm a, talking like like sketchy, like like get me the fuck out of here. Like, oh, that was time to to end. Like like for me, Milledgeville and um, Milledgeville and Anderson. Like that weekend that I oh, had yeah, with Trey, tires got slashed and everything. Yeah, we had we had the crazy the crazy weekend the weekend that we met Hunter Holland and Connor Sweeney. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, dude, I'm trying to think. What There's got to be something. Got to be something. Oh, uh, me, Jake Gant, Presley, Aaron, Khalil, uh, all of Presley's man. We went out to Denver one time. This wasn't a sketchy venue, but the area we were in was really sketch. We were we played uh, in Denver. Yeah, Presley was doing the house band thing. Correct? Mm-hmm, the house yeah. band, and then we're late night uh, riding around in Denver. Probably shouldn't be just exploring. Um, and then we <laughs> did we come up into like this what we thought was like this little convenience store. We were, we were trying to find something that was open like twenty four seven. Go like in there, score twenty four hours. That's how I always feel. Yeah, dude. We knock on this door, and then all of a sudden, like this little glass thing like slides open. Oh, like trap house shit. And I was like, oh my god. And they were like, uh, who are you here for? And I was like, uh, like we're just trying to get a drink, dude. And he was like, uh, yeah, that's not slides closed, and then we just get in the car and get out of there. That was definitely a sketchy one. I was in Denver. Um, what do you think it was, dude? I don't know. We just got out of there. My money, my my, my bet on that would be the like prostitution ring, something or, like that, dude. or 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 a trap house. Yeah, for sure. Who are you here for? Sketchy. Yeah. It's like, it's like the it's like that scene in Beer Fest where they're knocking <laughs> on the door and they open up the thing and you got to recite the whole thing. Yeah. Um, dude, sketchy, sketchy places. Like for me, uh, there's there were certain nights like where where settlements were were interesting. You know, like yeah. where you settle up and there there is and you hear stories, especially back in the day. Particularly funny enough, going back to the Georgia guys, like you're Brantley Gilbert talk about it. Like where it's you're settling up. 
on the, the the southern like bar club circuit and you're about you're getting paid by the guy and he's got he's got a he's got a 44 sitting on the fucking table <laughs> you know he doesn't have it in his hand but you see it's fucking cocked and kind of facing you you know like there's this like sketchy kind of things like we had the lakeview guys on and they said they had to chase down club owners before like promoters and go to the atm with them to get their money like they've Jeez. had to do that before yeah, yeah dude, i've never had Which, to do that's it. the rock world that's yeah, different that's, that's hard. i've never had to do anything like that what the, like um, with country and especially like it's the the circuits that like the country circuit particularly in the southeast has always been a little more established you know for sure like paxton's not playing any of that so have you done a lot of frat party gigs with them yeah dude those can those can be like really fun as well we've done a lot uh like at mississippi state um i've done some with connor sweeney yeah, have you done clemson, the, clemson, the clemson connor clemson sweeney ones are always fun. i hear those are black i see the videos of those all the time and i'm like these boys are yeah, having dude, those a are, ball those are really fun um athens is always fun if we ever get to Go up there and do any fraternity. Fraternity shows are awesome. Those kids are always out there to have a great time. You see, I never, I've never done. Actually, we technically did one in um, in Dallas. That SMU thing that we did with um, what the fuck's his name, Elliot. Yeah, that was technically technically like a frat frat kind of thing, but like they. Trey and McElwain and all them came up on the frat circuit. Like what Paxton and Connor and them have been doing the last like two, two, three years. Yeah. It's what they did for a very long time. So I in Muscadine used to do that too. Like I've never I've never TM'd or been on the road for like a frat show, frat show. Yeah, dude. It's, I've never done it. Like what's the loaded like what, what how are there, just, I guess or is it like a box of chocolates? You never know what the fuck yeah, you're doing. It's just so chaotic usually. Like you'll call like whoever's in charge and they really usually don't know what's going on until day of. You get there and you try to park as close as you can to wherever this mobile stage is. Um, and then you look, it's just, I don't know, dude, it's always chaotic. I do not prefer those gigs, but every once in a while they're pretty They fun. probably pay great. Yeah, dude, they, yeah, they pay, they they pay great. They pay great. And they're that's, really good. And when you're doing the cover thing and you're splitting, you're splitting things yeah, out. Yeah, and then you're chasing these kids down to try to find this check and everyone's got a, what are those things called? Borgs? Have you Borg? seen those? What's a Borg? It's like a uh, empty uh, gallon jug that they put like vodka and juice oh, and everything what in is the, this yeah dude it's like a new thing that like these college kids are doing yeah well dude i graduated college 2017 you were still in diapers bro <laughs> i was in high school yeah okay yeah yeah, yeah. High, that's what i mean diapers you know you weren't even driving actually georgia you were probably driving yeah it was 2017 driving. you were probably driving it's definitely what year are you born 2000 you're born in 2000 <laughs> jesus christ i could tell you the yankees starting lineup in the world series in 2000 that's how that's how old enough but i that's the thing too like you you are i forget how young you are because of what you're doing yeah and the way you can you conduct yourself and industry definitely makes yourself. you grow up yeah fast. you, you kind of have to or you're yeah, gonna fall sure. in your fucking face or people aren't gonna take you seriously like with drayton for example um like i'll settle every night uh yeah, with venue owners, manager and yeah and you know i'm going up to these people and they're like looking at me like oh you're the tour manager and they're like you know in their 40s 50s and it's just i don't know you just have to grow up like really fast and learn how to speak to people and not act stupid when you're not supposed to. Like, work when it's time to work and play when it's time to play. How'd you get on the Drayton gig? Dude, I DM Drayton in 2019. Um, so you I, were early, early on him. Yeah, dude. I, I was a fan of Drayton. He, I still he, am, but I was, I was originally a fan of Drayton. Because he, he, he has the last year or two. Because I remember seeing him open for... Who the fuck did he open? He opened for somebody at the... Um, was it Giovanni and the Hired Guns, maybe? He opened for he ever, opened for somebody at was, the basement east. I saw him last what, year. I, I saw him last year opening. He was like first of three. That could be right. I'm not. It was first of three. It was before you were with him. But I was like, okay, this kid, this kid's cool. And I saw he was getting some streaming buzz. But now it's just it through the roof. So to, to say you were there and to say you were you were with Jam rocking out to Drayton in 2019. Yeah, I DM'd him like two good. or three times, no response. <laughs> and then uh, maybe like six or seven months later. I had DM'd him again, and we were just talking about, like, me coming on the road, um, which was really cool. And then nothing really happened. And then one random day, he, uh, he DM'd me, and he asked me if I would be in Nashville uh, the following day. And I was. We weren't on the road that weekend uh, for whatever reason. And he played the basement, went out there, shot that concert, um, shot video photo for it. Great place to take photos, isn't Dude, it? Dude, God, it was awful. <laughs> <laughs> Being five foot nine at the original basement taking yeah. photos, not fun. So where'd, where'd you stand? What's, where was your, Dude, where were you able to get to? everywhere. I was just, I was trying to get closer to the front, obviously. Get that like corner, like yeah, off that, where that little yeah. sidebar is. And I did a, uh, that stage is so tiny, but Drayton was playing acoustic. So I was where the uh, like drums would be at. 
a lot of the time I was getting like video of the crowd because a lot of people were singing back. It was really really cool. But since then to now, dude, it's crazy. That's the first show I ever did with them. I did like here like fill in shows here and there with them. Um, and then when this year 2023 started, that's when it really kind of anchored down with them. Yeah, it's what's, been awesome. What's the conversation like from you going to? the kid shooting photographers of a guy that you listened to to, Hey man, want to be my tour manager? Dude. Yeah. It, how did, how did that, how did it get, how did it get to that point? Well, it was just, uh, when I, when I first started traveling with Drayton, this was before he had a band and before he put his new album 20 on high out. Um, so he blew up on an acoustic record. So when we would go on the road, it was his dad, his dad drives and sells merch for him. It's awesome. Shout out Mr. Adrian, um, Kanan, his nephew. He also plays in his band. But he was selling merch. Drayton, well. Drayton's nephew? Drayton's nephew. They're 12 years apart. Kanan. Kanan wow. Kellum. He's also an artist, too. He's really badass. What's his name? You should check him out. Kanan Kellum. And he's out of Alabama? Out of Alabama, yeah. Well, you know we love our, you know we love our Alabama folks. Kanan Kellum. You'll be on the lookout. Um, but yeah, dude, it was Kanan, his dad, and Drayton and me. And that was it. Wow. And we were, um, like, we did the whole acoustic opening uh, support for Lucas Nelson. Yeah. Uh, but before, like right before that, I was doing like like weekend runs with them and stuff, and I just found myself like I was just helping them pack up, figuring out where things were, um, just kind of doing all that. And then finally it came to we had all these uh, the Lucas Nelson tour and the Whiskey Myers support uh, lined up, and you know you you gotta have somebody on those. There's so much going on with those big shows. So he asked me if I wanted to do uh, photos, video, and TM. So I've been knocking all that out. It's a lot. It's a lot, dude. I'm learning a lot, though. I, I love it. It's so cool. what's kind of the end goal? Like, where does Brennan Cato want to be? And say, say by, so you're how old right now? 23. So you're 23. Okay, so 2030. You're, you're 30 years old. Where, where do you kind of see yourself? Or is that even, that even too tough of a question? Because I feel that, like, I wanted to be a radio DJ. Well, originally I wanted to be in sports media. Then I wanted to be a radio DJ. I wanted to be like, like a Bobby Bones. Like, I wanted to have the cool job where I'm talking to country singers doing that. I would have never guessed that I'm, I'm now co-owning a, a country music lifestyle brand podcast network called yeah. Raised Rowdy. So, like, it changes so quick. But as it sits right now on, what is this, June 7th, 2023, where do you see yourself? seven years from now like what do you want to be dude I, that's a that's a tough question um i definitely want to open up like my own like i guess camera company um so photos is where that's like photos where video is. have somebody have a few people under me you know that i really believe in that believe in like what me and the other artists that we're working with are doing um dude i i really would like to be in the business i just don't really know exactly what i want to do yet um i love touring i love music um Maybe A and R one day. Yeah, you're I'm at really the you're sure. at the perfect age for the touring thing too. Yeah, it's like you really are to be twenty to be twenty three, no wife, no kids, like no nothing really binding you. Like you've you're at the, you're in the perfect position to be doing exactly what you're fucking doing. Yeah, dude, which is awesome. Sure. Um, I don't know, dude. I I absolutely love what I do. So as long as I can like keep feeling how I'm feeling now, I don't know if I'll ever stop doing it. Yeah, whatever that may mean. Whether that means I'm tour managing whether that means i'm an a&r whether that means whatever it would be but I don't yeah. know. it's uh i think it's cool not knowing exactly what i want to do yet because that means there's i can do really anything yeah how's I yeah definitely have a lot of ideas brewing in my head but that's one thing i've been thinking about for a while is the camera company having some guys under me and having them go out with different people that i know um like weekends i can't go out with somebody like if Drayton's on the road or whatever. So you'd rather maybe. be in, like, the touring photography video stuff as opposed to, like, directing music videos and shit? Music Depending videos, on that, the day, dude. It's a whole, it's have a you, whole have different... You, have, you done a mu have you done music videos for people? I've done, like, two or three. Um, nothing that's, like, ever been put out, really. We've, like, put bits and pieces of it out. Yeah. Um, of, like, different clips. Like, uh, my buddy Jace Pearson. Yeah. We shot, uh, we shot one for uh, one of his songs. And we used some of the stuff for it, but... I don't know, dude. It was just like one of my first ones. We really didn't exactly know what we were doing. It's kind of like one of those learning things. Um, but I would love to do one soon. I've definitely been thinking about doing it. But I've just been so busy on the road, man. Bro, yeah. It's so hard to you know, sit down and actually do something when you're in town for two or three days. Yeah, dude. It Especially is, a music video because that takes a long yeah, time. It is tough. How's all the um, living situation going? Dude, it's... Um, With everything right it's now. It's definitely getting better. We, uh, we've been on the look, dude. We've been every day just like touring... Houses applying, calling. We uh, we thought we had one, but uh, fell through. Yeah. So we're back to stage one. But we got really good people around us that really help yeah, us out. Yeah. 
But if you don't mind talking, because like, I know that's that's a lot of shit you guys went through, like, a lot, like over the last, like, month or two. Yeah. You know, like, if you, if you don't want to talk about it, we don't have no, to. No, yeah, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, we You don't can. mind? Okay. Yeah. Like, so what? long story short, uh, me, my roommate Logan Millwood, and my other roommate uh, Wilkins Norwood, we were uh, all not home. Wilkins was at work. He works in the medical field. He was at the hospital. Yeah. Logan was, like, in Texas, and I was in – uh, Gulfport, Mississippi. We were at a festival. I get off the stage. I get a phone call, and it was uh, the Hermitage Fire Department. I was like, "What the heck?" So I answered the phone, and they were asking if, like, if I was at home. If this was Brennan Cato, I said yes. Um, if I was at home, I said no. I'm on the road. Like, is everything okay? And they said that an apartment, bes- like two or three units over from ours, had caught fire, and it was spreading. And they, that was like kind of all they told us. Like, it hadn't got to our apartment yet. They were going to keep us updated. And then Wilkins left work, drove to the apartment, looked at it, and then, like, the flames had came over to our apartment and just went crazy. You're like, what do you, what do, you do I mean, in that situation? Dude, I just kind of, like, we got off stage, and then I got that phone call, and I just walked outside dude, and just kind of sat down. Like, you just feel numb. You don't really, like. Because you can't really process it over yeah. a phone call. Yeah. And I was, we had one more show the next day. And uh, Drayton kept asking me if, like, he wanted me, like, if he wanted me to go home. Or, like, he was asking me if I wanted to go home. And I was like, well, dude, like, no. No, I just, don't. There's, there's nothing to, like. There's nothing to go home yeah, to. Yeah. And it, was just, it was crazy just kind of, like, processing all of that. And when I got home, it, or got home, when I got back to Nashville, it definitely, like, hit me harder, I would say. But it's just a numb feeling, dude, just to know, like, everything I had on the road was, like, all I have, like, to my name. Yeah. We're doing better. We have a lot yeah. of good, uh, like all my friends, dude. They've been awesome. Dude, like, we did that. We did that event with you guys, and yeah, the, the support of from the dude, boys. Everybody's been awesome, dude. It's just so cool to like. I moved here two years ago, dude. I moved here and knew like three people. Yeah. Like, there's no. I have no. I'm, pr- business, I'm proud like, to be one of the first three. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. But there's no like. It's just crazy to see how all the support from these people that like a lot of these people didn't even know me, dude. They know me from like Instagram. Some of these people have never met me in my life. And they're over here, like, donating to our GoFundMe and reaching out, telling me, like, I can stay on their couch. It's a testament it's to you, awesome, but also dude. the guys that you were living with, with, live, like, it's a testament to Wilkins and to, and to Logan. Like, yeah. all three of you, great dudes, give the shirt off your back, like, bust your ass, and just, just pleasant people to be around. Like, if you bump, like, if I bump into any of you guys at Red Door, I'm like, fuck yeah, <laughs> the boys are here. Yeah, dude, and we'll, sit and, are talk, and we'll sit and talk for 10, 15, like... Just, just good people, and they call this the volunteer state for a reason, you know. Yeah. Even though none of us are really from here, it you're, there's something to be said for the the community, the community factor, man. You know, we always got your, always got your back, no matter what. Yeah, thank you. It's it's important. So where where was that house? Where was the latest house you were looking at? Uh, it was actually in Hermitage. Okay, I don't think I we can get another apartment, dude. We've all agreed, like that's just kind of. You guys just, are ready for a house. Yeah, you're all ready for a house. Definitely with a, back, with a backyard. Yeah, with dude. a garage. Hey, absolutely. A garage is huge, especially with all the fucking, with the musical gear and stuff. Yeah. And then you more could, storage. Yeah, dude, the storage stuff's huge, bro. Yeah. But I'm hoping we'll find one soon, dude. We've been, like I said, we've been looking every day. It's so yeah. hard to find like a decently nice house, like Shit. in a specific area that we that you want in Nashville, dude. It's bro, crazy. there's a hundred people a day moving here. It's crazy. It's nuts. Other cities don't have this problem. Crazy. And the rent and the rent prices are up too. They are. Like they are way up from, from the lease that you guys had gotten in at, at that apartment, I'm sure. A lot. Yeah. Did the apartment company like do anything with Yeah, so they um they gave us housing housing. They gave us like hotels for uh I wanna say it was like four or five days. Um and then they had like Red Cross up there, they were uh helping us out. Um But I mean there's it's, I I believe it's still like an ongoing investigation. Yeah. You know, like I don't know. It's just crazy, dude. It's all surreal. Sometimes it, feel, it still doesn't even feel real. Yeah. It's crazy. It's happened, I think, a month ago. But thank God you were on the road and you weren't, like, taking a nap or something. Could you yeah, imagine dude. that? That's what I was saying. Can you, ha- si- you imagine being there, watching it burn? That'd be terrible. <laughs> terrible. Like, that's worst-case scenario to me, is being inside or... You guys didn't have any pets, did you? mm But, dude, I was, like... Whenever it happened, I was thinking the last two shows that we were doing on this run when it happened were festivals. Because we had just got off like a long run and had two shows. And if we didn't uh, book those two festivals, dude, there's a good chance. Like, I would have been home that day just sleeping. Because, you know, you get off the road more than like a three-day run, dude. You're, you're sleeping yeah. all hours yeah. of the day. You're not doing anything. Yep. 
Been so there. There's a gr- and it happened during the day, dude. There's a great chance I could have been taking a nap and you God knows what could have happened. Yeah. But we're here. We're uh we're doing better. Friends are awesome. Matt Burrill and Paxton P, Walker Wilson, everybody Connor Sweeney. Yeah, dude. Connor I mean, Chastain. We're... All the boys are really helping us out. Yeah, dude. And and I like I said, I'm proud to be like one of your your older brother of older brother words are hard motherfucker. yeah dude it is cma fest which I, what week, are you doing guys. the rest Jesus. of this week what do you have going on the rest of this week for cma fest uh drayton's coming up to nashville tonight uh, oh yeah we got like a little event tonight i gotta meet up with him dude i've yeah, still dude, sure. never met him in the flesh and i yeah, really you definitely want have to align to. that drayton when you watch this you got to meet my boy matt yeah we um we gotta line that up um, is he like does he like cigars is he a smoker at all yeah okay We'll, enjoys a cigar every now and then. We'll do that. We got we got plenty to smoke. We got we got unlimited unlimited beer at the Razor Hardy headquarters. Yes, sir. Um, Drayton's coming up tonight. We have like a little event tonight. Um, what else do we have? I feel like I have something else tonight. Are you hitting the road this weekend? Yeah, we're leaving Friday morning. Where are you guys headed? Um, we're playing a Laurel Cove festival in uh, Pineville, Kentucky. Okay. And then we're playing. Uh, we're direct support for uh, Band of Heathens Saturday. Dude. In uh, Seneca, South Carolina. Sick. Sick. Seneca's a cool spot, too. I've never been there. Yeah, it's cool. So Seneca, I believe, is right outside of Clemson. Mm-hmm. I think I've been through there. Yeah. Um, me and Jake Gant were talking about that last night. He told me it was close to Clemson. But yeah, it's the up, the... the should be pretty rowdy. there's that low country, South Carolina, and then there's the, the northern part where, like, you have the blind horse and you have Wendell's and you have, like, that kind of cackalacky, as I like to call it. Like, Dude. it gets a little wilder up there. You said blind horse. That just made me blind think. horse saloon. Yeah, yeah. you've been. Have you you've done yeah, shows dude. there, right? My the, so the first show, like country show I ever did. I told you a little while ago was with Jeb. Yep. The first run I ever did, we did blind horse. What's the other one that's in? Uh, there's North, cow, there's cowboy or, or coyote joes. Coyote joes. And Who was this horse. with? Uh, Kylie Morgan and Kanan Smith and uh, Red Farron was the acoustic opener. Oh shit! So who are you? Who are you shooting out there? Kylie Morgan. Oh shit! Yeah, she's was, she's got a she's got a song at radio or something. Yeah, she's right? really good. She's doing great. I haven't talked to I haven't seen her talk to them since. But yeah, I was 19 years old. It was always really cool. It was like the first. I thought I was touring, dude. It was it was cool. I mean, you were. I mean, I was, but, but I thought it was we, like what, a for what, real. What were you all riding around in? Uh, I think we were in Kylie's manager's car. Oh wow! Yeah, it was like a little box, like a I can't remember what kind of car it was, but it was a little tiny car. What's the weirdest thing you've toured in? The weirdest. Um. Or like the tight, like tightest, or just, or I mean, the Redneck Express has to be up yeah, there. Yeah, I was gonna say, dude, there's nothing like the Redneck Express, dude. It's like a bot. Like I always think, how, of, how would you describe it? If you could like, imagine, like a, I always think of a bread truck. So where I'm from, there's like, there's like, I don't know what the bread companies are called. All the bread <laughs> companies will drive around and like deliver bread to the grocery stores. Yeah. So it literally is the exact same truck. I call it the, a bread truck. Yeah. But it's that exact same model, and it's converted into like a touring van yeah. it has four bunk beds in it a couch a mini kitchen and it has sleeping quarters over the uh, where the driver sits so you have like a little mattress above there um but dude that we've gave that thing hell first i think i believe it was the first time that hunter chastain took it out like his band me and hunter were coming back um i think we had dropped his band off in murfreesboro uh, we all met, like uh, had bus call there you all pull a trailer with it yeah, we were pulling a trailer with it, and we're getting back, and we're probably like 45 minutes, maybe 35, 40 minutes from Nashville, and we break down on the side of the road, and we didn't even feel like dealing with it. It was like 5 a.m., so we just went to sleep, <laughs> and then we got up the next morning. I called Walker Wilson. He came and got us, and uh, Connor was not very happy, but uh, yeah, he has a Sprinter now. His Sprinter is awesome, but dude, we I hope he never, ever, ever, ever gets rid of that thing, the Redneck Express. I want to take it out with yeah. Ray's Rowdy. Connor, I'm, you have got, we've got bro, to do this, dude. I mean, what I want to do, be too, awesome. so some OG Ray's Rowdy content, um, back in the day, Nikki did a, um, a like, a tour of Jordan Fletcher's old vehicle. Do you remember, you ever see that? Oh, yeah. So he had the truck, and then he had, like, the camper that goes on the bed of the truck, and Jordan used to follow Muscadine around Mm -hmm. when he was selling merch for them and opening for them, and he would follow them around in that thing when they were in the the Sprinter and the, um, what else? They um, were in uh, Charlie's uh, Avalanche. They were in Charlie's Avalanche or in the the Sprinter, and Jordan would follow around. Nikki did a video back in the day. That. 
I want to do a fucking tour, like a, like an MTV crib style tour of the Trey Red Bonner did one for Connor. I'm saying I want, but like I'm, a you want I like want, a D, I, want, yeah. I want Ray's rowdy content yeah. with with Nikki T. We, yeah, um, we definitely got to do that, Connor. Yeah, because that would this, be awesome. This last weekend, I got to go out with Trey again. Um, we did rowdy on the road. Oh, yeah, how was that, bro? I it was the was most there, relaxed was awesome. touring experience I have ever fucking. Shout had. out to Danny, dude. Dude, it was an incredible time. Um, the dynamics over there are different. For sure. There's been some personnel changes. But it's still the, the Trey Lewis crew. Yeah. It's it's rowdy, but you're not looking around to make sure that like the, the it's rowdy and it's fun, minus about ninety eight percent of the liability, <laughs> you know? Which is great. It's it's fun. The guys are still having a lot of fun. Sweetboy has adjusted his new role very, oh, very yeah, well. Dude. Very, very, very well. He is moving around the entire fucking day like he was. And then he I gets went out done, with Trey like two weeks ago, dude. McElwain was busting his dude, ass. Dude, McElwain busts his ass. Andrew Bone, Bone, he's a great dr- dude. Me and Bone went to the gym one day. Oh lord, in Knoxville, <laughs> we went. I went to the gym. I did not work out with Bone because I cannot <laughs> keep up working out with Bone. But I just, I just did some machines and some, some like some cardio or whatever. Planet, Planet Fatness. Me and Nikki T. We used to hey, usually yeah. go there. I gotta have that black card membership so you can go to any Planet Fitness around the country and use the showers and shit. Um, Colton is a whole ass vibe. Dude, I love Colton. Colton is just cool as fuck. Shout out to Colton and Ryan Key and Josiah. I guess Nick could be in there too. The safety meetings, very important. They always make sure that the the venue and the crew is, is nice and safe. So shout out to the pre-show and post-show safety meetings um, in the trailer. Uh, they're very important. Yeah, I had dude. to partake in a few of those. They were outstanding. Um, <laughs> ben Miller, still Ben Miller. He's got some cool things going on. And then, um, and then Colin, man, spare parts. <laughs> Colin, that boy's an crazy, incredible, dude. Incredible, incredible guitar player. Oh yeah, he can shred. And he just means so well. He can shred. He means so well. He's such a nice guy, but goddamn, he's like that <laughs> that dog that'll like <laughs> chew up the side of the couch, like chew up the wooden piece oh, of like the God. chair. And you're like, fuck. But you're like, I can't hate you or discipline you because you're just. It's, I don't know. I, I get that vibe from Colin. He's he's awesome. And then, dude, Josie's a fucking G. Josiah is awesome. Josiah, I will say this. ACMs or CMAs, whatever fucking award you know, it is, <laughs> in the next, like, I would say five years, Josiah, you have Ray's Rowdy's vote for tour manager of the year. It's going to happen. Whether it's with Trey or whoever you're with, whatever, like, Josiah gets shit done. Dude, he's really good. He doesn't even know this, but he's taught me so much. Bro, like, when I'm I on learned, the road with I'm Trey, not, dude, I'm, I just, I'm not even, I I'm, always just watch I, what he's doing. Yeah, he's so good yeah, at his job. I'm retired from being a tour manager. <laughs> I'm done now. I'm, a, now I'm a, an aspiring entrepreneur, small business owner that sells T-shirts and goes and camps out in a tent, basically a carny of a festival, a, a music festival. That's <laughs> the life I have chosen, the life I'm proud to live with my brother, Nikki T. But I'm retired from tour managing, but I learned a lot. I learned. I wasn't even trying to learn, but just by being around Josie, I'm like, oh, yeah. If I had done this back in the day, like it makes so much sense. And he does it all in the shadows, and he's mm-hmm. very quiet about it, and it's so productive. And then O'Malley was out with us too this weekend, oh, yeah, uh, which was great because we I did seen him forever, dude. It was awesome, and he's blowing up on social media. It's funny. Q6 guys are fun, man. They're they're cool. I thank them for designing the studio, and shout out to Trey and Alex and Mitch and Bonner and. Everybody with DM Monday um, letting us use the space as always, but um, it's funny because they're like behind the camera guys, like like you, like they're usually behind and creating and directing. O'Malley is a goddamn personality. Like <laughs> O'Malley is such a personality. Sacco or Wacko, as I like to call him, Wacko. Never never forget um, Buda Buda Texas Wacko. Um, and I we'll we'll talk about it off the air. Um, <laughs> he um, he's to me like. A behind the scenes, like he's the kind of like like a brain and stuff. O'Malley's just fucking electric. I mean, then you have you have Ingram, the fucking technician, making incredible clips, editor. Now they've got him some help at Q6, which is cool. But O'Malley, bro, he's had those. He's had so many videos pop. Like the dude's got a massive TikTok following on his personal account. Oh, yeah. He's in ads for Panera Bread. Jeez, like he's on commercials. <laughs> That's awesome for fucking Panera Bread. <laughs> it's crazy. Like he's making money off his TikTok as a, as the guy on the camera. Like he does those movie, those cast movie things and like 
different things. So getting to collaborate with him was really cool. And it was so nice to be out on the road. And my responsibility is to interview Trey Lewis fans. I bet that was it's fun. To hang out with Trey. It's to come up with concepts. Like we did one that's going to be coming out of um, traded performance reviews with all the guys in the band. It was at Cotton Eye Joe sitting in the green room, one of them long fold out tables. And it was like Trey calling in Colin, calling in Bone and Colton and Ben. And like asking them questions, like performance reviews, and like fucking with them a little bit, and like <laughs> I got to help come up with that idea. Like it's it's cool to be to still be involved in that because I do feel permanently attached to like Trey Lewis and Musket on Bloodline. Those are, those are family, you know. Yeah. And I'm still going to use the studio at a very good rate, um, which again I'm thankful for. <laughs> um, but it's cool. It was cool to go out and watch and see where the show's at. They've got a new set now, bro. It's badass playing songs that are coming from the new project that'll be coming yeah. later this year. Like it was, it was, it was nice. To be up. And Danny, like you said, they don't make them like Danny. Dude, they don't do Danny is an animal. His bus drivers can be so fucking needy. He's you the, know who you are watching this. Don't <laughs> start. No true. shit. Won't be no shit. Um, <laughs> shout out. Um, he knows, he knows he watches these. Um, they can be very needy because when they do it for a long time and work with different bands, they learn to get they learn to get spoiled and they need a hotel or they need this or they need that. Danny sleeps dude, on Danny the bus with the boys. Shit, Danny Danny is the magical two words of private <laughs> coach. Danny is a definition yeah. of private coach. If you look up private coach in Webster's dictionary, it would probably say Danny. It'd be Danny. <laughs> It'd be Danny um, with a with a bottle of Dime Mountain Dew and a handful of Twix and Snickers bars, a little fun mini size, um, which awesome. is funny. He was getting on me for bumming smokes this weekend. He's like, "Those aren't good for you." I'm like, "Like Danny, how many EpiPens do you bring out with you?" And I was like, Daddy giving him a little Danny, bit dude. of shit because he's uh he's he's he is heavy diabetic, but he loves his candy. He's very simple. He just wants can and dude. I hooked up Spotify for him again. Oh, really? got, I, I taught him how to play music on his phone again. So he had been driving in pure silence. God, They've man. got to run out to Utah coming up not too long from now. Jeez. Yeah. Do you imagine him driving terrible. to Utah with no noise? Absolutely Literally nothing? Not. It's chaos. That sucks. Um, but Danny's the man. Absolutely. Such a good bus driver. Have he you is. have you dealt with other bus have you been out on buses with other crews before? Dude, I haven't. Or just with Trey. I've been uh, I've never traveled on a bus besides with Trey. Crazy. So when you're driving, so I've been in a vehicle with you, with you driving. You you helped me drive a little bit. Come back from Birmingham and on some other some other ventures we've done together. Um, what is like your you pull into a loves? You got you got a um, you pick out a snack. You pick out a drink. And what's your idea? So snack, beverage, and um, what fast food joint do you hope is connected to the loves? Dude, What's your ideal white situation? White cheddar popcorn for the snack. The little black bag? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's one of my favorites. Pop Smart or whatever, Smart Food or whatever yeah. the fuck it's called. Um, dude, I've been trying to like not drink as much caffeine lately. I usually drink a lot. God of, bless you. I usually drink a lot of caffeine. I've had two coffees already today. Yeah, I haven't had any caffeine today It's yet. fucking 1230. I've already had two. Um, but if I'm not <clears throat> getting like an energy drink or something, I'm probably going to try to get like a Gator Light. Those Gator Lights are awesome. Yes. Um, Save really, lives, right, McElwain? Saves lives. <laughs> Um, dude, and I really every time I go to a Loves, I just pray there's a Subway connected. You're a Subway guy, I am. okay? I love subs. A little Philly cheesesteak. You get a Philly cheesesteak from Subway? Mm -hmm. I just get the ham and cheese. I don't trust their oh, stuff yeah, very dude. much. I like J Jimmy John's is probably my favorite of the sandwich places. Mm -hmm. Imagine a Jimmy John's connected to a um, connected to a um, a Loves or a Pilot. <laughs> That'd be great. Pilot's awesome. the fucking worst of all yeah, of those three. Fuck sure. Pilot. Like, fuck Pilot, for real. I mean, I have the rewards app on my phone still, but fuck you, Pilot. Um, you know what I saw yesterday? I saw I was driving out to, on Monday. I was driving out to Hendersonville to go meet up with Bonner, and I drove was driving through, um, like, Old Hickory. There's a Mabco. You know what's connected to it? Like, literally in the same building? What? Fucking Pizza Hut. <laughs> a Pizza Hut at a Mabco, bro. There you go. To me, that just brings up nostalgia. Like, did you guys have Pizza Huts at, like, Target and stuff when you were growing up? Um, I don't think we had like Pizza Hut. Like we had a, when we just, I when I was young, we would go into Target. You would always go in there and like get the popcorn. You would get like the big large soda. Yeah, you had see, the slices of pizza. We had, we had that, but the slices of pizza were a Pizza Hut. Oh, really? And you get the little mini personal mm -hmm. pizzas. Yeah, dude. Pizza Hut Express. So to me, isn't I know I'm very hard on pizza, but like, and they played a good joke on me this weekend with the pizza. By the way, what they do? Mac Wayne could tell you. I think he's 
He can he can mumble his way through. Uh, what city were we? That in? was Greensboro. Greensboro. We uh we went to a Mexican restaurant to have like some margaritas before the show, and we left and we were like, well, we gotta get you know dinner for everybody. So we go we, like just put in an order at this pizza place right across the street. We told him the guy was from New York, like like basically said like. If you don't know, if you don't like this, you don't know what New York pizza is. Like, so we had him fooled there for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and but the pizza was actually really good. Really, it was some of the best pizza I've had of the South. Wow, that's saying great. that's saying something coming from you. Yeah, the crust was great. The fuck, it reminded me of a place back home called Cicero's because I've got we've got pizza joints like y'all have Mexican restaurants and fast food places. You know, that's yeah, for sure. That's how the North. I love is. Mexican food, dude. I do too, bro. So good. I find myself getting Mexican food multiple times a week. Yeah, dude. Las Palmas and Hermitage. Bro, that's, that's my spot. spot. That is the spot. We got to fucking go there yeah, together. We gotta go. Me, I, go, I go with Nikki T all the time. Bro, you and Nikki T have to come with us sometime. Dude, you got to go with Boudreaux. You got to get Mexican with Tyler. I'm sorry. <laughs> Tyler gets a whole large cheese dip just for himself. Oh, hell yeah. My type of guy. I've seen him get a, get a fajita quesadilla and dip it in the fucking <laughs> cheese dip, bro. I've seen I that man do I like cheese dip a lot too, man. Their guac's really good too. They got good stuff there. Las Palmas is the shit. Yeah, really good. They get really like, good drink prices too. I like it a lot. So what else? Um, what else do you got? Do you got going on in your world? Any any ladies out there? No, nah, we, cr- we critter crawling or what? What are we doing? Here and there, man. Trying to keep my head on straight. Okay, so you're you're all business. All business. Dude, I've shown on the road so much, dude. It's so hard to have a girlfriend when you tour. Yeah, trust me, I know. I'm, so I've got, hard. I've got a very, I've got a very, very serious girlfriend. Not now, saying it's not possible, it's, but it definitely makes it. Dude, hard. if I, if I was still out on the road with, with, with Trey, it's not because I was on the road with Trey. It's just being on the road in general and being gone as much as I was. I don't think I'd be in the relationship that I'm in now. Yeah. I'd probably still have be able to like. Have other, I don't think it'd be as serious as it is because, it, like you said, it's just hard when you're gone for. Sometimes weeks to, to yeah, a month. Dude, at like a we're time. leaving. Um, me, Drayton, and band. We're leaving like July 9th, I believe, and we're not coming back till August sixth. Yeah, you can't. We're going out west for four, like four weeks. Like you can't do that when you have a girlfriend or wife. Yeah, I mean, you, you can, but it's like, not fair. At my age, it's so hard, dude. But yeah. I don't know. I have fun. I love what I do. What's the it's, What's uh, the lady situation like out there with Drayton? Drayton's married. Well, not well. I'm not saying I'm not saying for Drayton. I'm saying oh, like at the show. Like, what me. is the Drayton Farley crowd like? Because we've both experienced the Trey Lewis crowd. I've the Muscadine crowd. Like, yeah, it's very very female dominated. Dude, it's very different. Like from what I'm used to, like traveling with Hunter and Paxton and those guys. <clears throat> well, yeah, you're not playing to drunk college kids. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, uh, like, the demographic of his shows, dude, are really like just really blue, like a lot of blue collar. Um, it's a lot of guys you know that just got off work, um, or like a lot of people you know that booked a hotel last night and drove three hours to come watch and play like people don't really talk during the show they're like they really 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 enjoy the music it's re- like it's really cool to see coming from you know shows where i've been people are just blackout drunk not turned around the other direction um and then you go to like a drayton farley show or any really any of the americana artists dude like these people genuinely enjoy the music and like they genuinely connect to it like very deeply yeah. so they're there to like actually listen and take in what these artists are saying it's yeah. awesome. What what is Americana music to you? Because everybody's got their own definition of it. Dude, Americana music to me is just like, just that sound. Like I don't know. I guess it's more of a sound to me, and it's a, like Americana songs to me are like very deeply written songs. Like some of the songs Drayton have showed me, dude, that he hasn't like put out, or like it, there's so much thought and so much like emotion put into these songs. Um, but that, I, I guess that's what I would define Americana music, dude. Just, like, very deeply written songs and just, like, a, acoustic sound, I guess. Yeah, because there's full band Americana stuff, too. Yeah, but Drake it's just still, put out a full band album, dude. But it's still, like, when you listen down, to it. It's still, like, stripped down. Yeah, there. when you listen to it, you can, de- like, I don't know. I guess that's my definition of Americana. But when you listen to, like, his full band album, it's not, like, another full band album of, like, a, yeah. I guess, like, a new I'm age actually, country music I'm actually singer. curious. I'm going to look this up. I've been doing a lot of, like, jumping on the phone during the podcast things here lately. I'm going to look up, like, Americana. The definition? No, not, not the definition. I'm going to look it up on, on fucking Spotify. Like, Americana mix. You've got, like... Like, to me, it's interesting because, like, some of these names I don't think of as American. Like, they have, so Americana Mix. Oh, that's made by, that's not the fucking Americana. Oh, where's, 
It says made for me, but it's I want it to be fucking like a Spotify one. Americana playlist. Like what Spotify or like what Apple considers fucking Americana. Because it's like I just saw that one and it said Colby Acuff, Flatland Cavalry, and fucking um, like Wyatt Flores. But to me, they fit more in the country realm than the Americana realm. But is it just mainstream? Is it just the name that mainstream in Nashville have given to traditional country? Yeah, you know, which to me isn't doesn't do it justice. Okay, yeah, this this to me is more. These are a lot of names I haven't fucking heard of. Which to me, I mean, Turnpike's on there, like fucking, um, like Lucinda Williams, Old Crow Medicine Show. Yeah, it's got like that folky kind of thing mm -hmm. to it. Yeah, folks, are, yeah, folks are good work. I want to, I want that's something I want to try to do this year with Ray's Rowdy that I don't think Nikki's ever done. I want to cover Americana Fest because like we get access to media pass stuff now. Like we did a huge thing with um, Tim Pan South. We went and covered a bunch of those. That's where we had that Meg Maroney video that basically like oh, almost. Yeah more than doubled our TikTok mm -hmm. and it's it's grown us to between that and some other stuff cool enough it's been since I've teamed up with Nikki and I've kind of teamed up we've grown the Instagram by over 15,000 followers that's awesome pretty dude. fucking wild yeah, yeah, but, but it content. came from like the Tin Pan South stuff like covering that and this you tomorrow like tonight I'm going to going to a cool pop-up show and then tomorrow Nikki and I'll be out in the wild fucking covering stuff and like but we're hosting the events I'd love to do that for Americana Fest yeah dude I think that'd be awesome It'd be cool just to see how different the culture is and the vibe you know yeah I think y'all would do very well at those too like all the fans they, they love merch yeah too. those are the fans that would go to merch and spend two two three hundred dollars yeah, just make, because it's making making stuff at the Americana Fest what is um Drayton's merch game like dude kills it what do you guys got um right now we only have two t-shirts we have uh, one style hat Dude, he sells three different vinyl. Those vinyl sell. Oh, it's the so vinyl good. people. Yeah. We sell CDs, stickers, koozies. Um, yeah, he does really, good, really good on merch. His, awesome. his merch is really, like, really nice too. That's awesome. I, I wear the shirts and the hats a lot. Fuck yeah, that's great, dude. Well, anything, anything else you wanna, you wanna talk about or, or um, plug or any questions for me or what? Um, yeah, I don't know. Um. What is, it, what is uh next couple of weeks, next couple of months look like for you, Nikki T? Like, what oh, have Christ, to dude. It's brutal. Y'all got any, like, any... It's brutal. Brutal. Um, so we have five events. This We had our first of five CMA events yesterday. We've got the Canadian event Friday when this comes out. This will be coming out on uh, two days. Um, we've got the Canadian country music event at Live Oak on Friday. Jeez. Saturday we have the Trey Lewis Troublemakers fan club event which will be a live DM Monday podcast a writer's round and then a full band set by Trey followed Sweet. followed by July Moon at Live Oak. While I'm at Live Oak doing that, Nick is going to be emceeing and hosting the Warner Nashville stage at 6th and Peabody from noon to 7pm. Jesus. And Sunday we have Play the Hits which will be, um, hit, we haven't announced, it'll be announced by the time this comes out. Be like, it's like uh, Jordan Walker, Ray Fulcher, Adam Craig, Trey Anderson, McKinney, Maxwell, Heath Warren, uh, Joy Beth Taylor, like all the hit writers. Then next week we go to Tailgate and Tall Boys in Bloomington, Illinois. Uh -huh. I leave on Tuesday with Max King and Callie Prince. We're they're we're bringing them out to festivals. Shout this year. out to them, be, dude! I love them. I love those two. They've become Callie. I love Matt. They're awesome. They have become um, they've become like real family to us within the Ray's Rowdy um, Ray's Rowdy gang. And Max being a Pittsburgh guy, and Callie's somebody that I've known since before COVID. Um, and they're they're really good people. We believe in them musically too, but they're just they're fun personalities, yeah. you know. So we're out there. I leave Tuesday. Nikki has two podcasts on Tuesdays, doing one with Ella and one with William Beckman. And then he leaves Wednesday morning with Ike and Vanessa. And the meet so we're getting me, Max and Callie get up there Tuesday night. We're gonna set up our tents and do all that shit. Then they get up there Wednesday, probably or mid afternoon. Actually, no, it's just Vanessa and Nikki because Ike has to drive separate because Ike is shooting content for Sea Creature at Peach Jam with Ben Chapman oh, on Wednesday. Yeah. So Ike's not getting no fucking Thursday, so we don't even have content till Thursday. And then we're at the festival Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Come back on Sunday. Rowdy on the road or Rowdy on the row on Sunday. God, dude, you weren't joking about being busy. Well, actually, uh, Peyton's going to host it for us. Peyton and Eamon are going to host that. Then I have a round on Tuesday the 20th. Then Friday, the Thursday the 22nd, Nikki is going down to Montgomery 
I'm going down either that day with him or the day after. I think he's going to go down the day before, meet up with Josh Terry. We're going to do content with the Shackleford Lane boys at their big hunting camp that they have just outside of Montgomery, near where McElwain's from, South Alabama. And then we are doing Rowdy on the Road content with John Langston at Range 231, the trailer bar in Montgomery. Hell yeah. John's never been there, JD. None of them have ever been there. They have no <laughs> idea what the Lord. fuck they're walking into. But we're going to be like selling some Ray's Rowdy merch there at John's merch table and like getting content, doing interviews with John and Brad and, and Pumbaa, Ben Grubbs, and like that whole crew. Then we get back from that Saturday. We've we're, we got media passes with the NASCAR Ray's Rowdy Racing. We're doing the Xfinity Series race on Saturday and then the, um, the Cup Series race on Sunday because NASCAR is here in Nashville. So we're going to both of those. And then and that takes us up to what? Uh, that takes us up beginning of June or beginning of July. And then like right at, we leave the 4th of July for Ohio. We go to country concert, the big festival, big four day festival in Ohio. Hell yeah. Come back, have rounds. We have, we have rounds at Live Oak every Sunday until football season starts. We're every Sunday, we're every other Tuesday. We've also, it sounds like we're going to be at Rock the South this year, hopefully, knock on, knock on wood. Um, we're going to be at Country Concert. We've got Tailgate and Tall Boys. We've got Rome River Jam this fall. We've got the Georgia Rodeo. We've got the Auburn Rodeo. Hell yeah, Been dude. talking about getting involved with folks and, like, those different businesses that are there. Like, it's about to be nuts. And then on top of that, I got a got a girlfriend now who is it's going awesome. It's going yeah, dude, I was going to ask you about that. How's that going? So fucking good. It's awesome, dude. She's, she's a few years few years older than me. She has a daughter, but that doesn't scare me at all. Like, it's, yeah. it's awesome. She's she's great, super supportive. Like, she was at Live Oak selling merch last night, just hanging out. <laughs> she was like, hey, if you want to go to Red Door, we can go there. I was like, no, I do not want to go to Red Door. I am fucking exhausted. <laughs> yeah, we went um, to Red Door last night. Yeah, I heard Nikki T, Nikki T was there for a little bit. Um, yeah. But, um, but no, that's going good. But her and I have some trips planned. We're going to be going up to New York. Um, my family's selling the house up there, moving to Delaware full time, which would be great. Avoid those taxes. <laughs> um, did you pay? New York's so fucking expensive. And then we have a trip to Destin, Florida. And then in September, we have, which if you're not on the road with Drayton, you should totally come down. We're going to be announcing it very soon, fully. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and fucking say it. If you've been listening to the episode for this long or watching it this Hell long, yeah. who cares? You're, you can know this information. You're rowdy. Um, <laughs> we are doing the rowdy at the Bama, where we do a, we're taking over the floor of Bama for a weekend. Oh, yeah, dude. I September. remember when y'all were, like, thinking about that. Whenever uh, y'all were mentioning it to me way back when. So that's, like, for sure happening. Yeah, it's... um. Yeah, it's it's gonna be awesome. It's um, September fifteenth, sixteenth, seventeenth, eighteenth. So we have that, and Erin will be going down for that too. And then we're talking with two of her friends about planning a trip out west to like Montana or Wyoming or something in the early fall. Yeah, dude, we're we're hitting uh, both of those states next month. Yeah, dude, that's what's so cool too. Being with Drayton, playing under the big sky this year, dude. Bro, yeah, dude, you're in a world so where excited. that scene isn't just regional a lot of the southern a lot of the acts out of nashville have a regional area they're yeah. midwest or they're they're southeast americana shit lives everywhere there's motherfuckers with everywhere. there are there are hipster dudes that wear flannels have beards eat and drink like trey bonner and like live that lifestyle like hipster ass motherfuckers in seattle in brooklyn new york in Chicago and Portland, all these cities that would love Drayton Farley just as much as the blue collar guy in fucking Glasgow, Kentucky yeah. loves Drayton Farley. We played in, um, we just got done with three day runs supporting Charles Wesley Godwin. That had to be sick. Dude, that was that awesome. dude is on a tear right now. Dude, he is badass. They put on a hell of a He was show. a great guy, too. Great guy. Awesome guy. He was a great guy. And what's really cool is, so it's like they, it's Charles Wesley Godwin in the Allegheny, what? Allegheny something? Um, yeah, I can't. Uh, but the band, his band was already a band and he just joined mm -hmm. up with them. Yeah. So the cats in his band on stage on the road have been playing together for a long time. They just needed a front man. They were just kind of like a, like a fucking like folky, like bluegrass, like fucking fast picking band. They just yeah. needed somebody to team up with. That's how Drayton's band is, dude. They uh, they all played together. Um, they're all out of Alabama. Yeah. They, they live here now. but they, God bless uh, the Alabama folks. R-O-W-T-Y-D-E. Row Tide. Tide. Well, they're all from Alabama, dude, and they had all been playing for years, and Drayton was finally looking for a band after uh, this album was getting put in the works. Yeah. So they had, they've all been playing for years and years and years together, and they're badass. That's awesome, dude. But um, 
it's kind of the same thing. You just have a talented group of like music individuals, and then you yeah. find a good frontman, someone that every everyone believes in. Yeah, it's crazy. It's fucking awesome, dude. Well, so I am. Sick. I that yawn that says it all, dude. Yeah. I am exhausted. Dude. It's pretty wild. Usually, if we record these in the morning, me and the guests are like wired, mm -hmm. and McElwain is the dead one because <laughs> he's he's waking up from Red Door the night before. But right now, you and I are fucking dead, and Sweet Boy's holding it together pretty well. Yeah, dude. It's pretty pretty fucking good. Shout out to the workhorse, Matt. Shout out to Sweet Boy, Matt yeah, McElwain. Dude, we had a long weekend. He will handle it. He will. He will handle it. But, dude, where can people go to find you and stuff? Because you got two Instagrams. Yeah, that's always a... Uh, Content life. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's always funny. Sometimes I'll accidentally post on another one. Yeah, uh, Bonner my, used to do that all the time. My Instagram <laughs> is uh, Brennan Cato 14 and baseball number? Yeah, baseball yep. number. Um, and I was born on the 14th. Nice. And then uh, my photo page, video page, is Brennan Took It. So if you're wondering uh, if something goes missing and you're in the same room as Brennan, <laughs> just remember, Brennan took it. Yeah, you gotta Brennan, Brennan took that cookie from the cookie <laughs> jar. Brennan took that beer out of the cooler. Brennan, Brennan took it, you know? So, yeah. Hell yeah. That's awesome. And um, be on the lookout at uh, straightandfarleymusic.com. Yeah, website? Drayton Farley Music dot com. Um, Drayton Farley, <clears throat> Drayton Farley Music on Instagram. Yeah, um, he's got a lot of stuff coming up, dude. I'm excited. We got we're going everywhere this year. He's got a lot of music coming to the top. That's awesome. Well, anybody watching this, listening to this, uh, check out Drayton's music. And if you get out to a show, be sure to pop over to Brennan and be like, "I saw you on the <laughs> on the outside the round I with saw Matt you Burrell. on the internet. I seen you on the TikToks. I seen you on the internet." And go up there and break his balls a little bit. We love him for real. He's uh, my uh, one of my one of the. Probably my, my favorite of the little brothers that I have here in Nashville. For real. Like it's Hell it's yeah. been so cool to watch you fucking do the damn thing and, and you're just getting started, buddy. And I'm I'm very yeah, excited. This is to just see. the beginning. Exactly, man. I'm I'm super stoked and always know you ever need anything. You got you got some some guys that are a little bit older than you that, that believe in you and are always down to help you with myself, Nikki T, whatever McElwain can do for you, you know. We're yeah, always dude. we're always we're always here for you, dude, and happy to have you as a part of the gang and part of the DGens and part of the family, you know. <laughs> we appreciate y'all more than y'all know, dude. Me I'm speaking for me and all my friends. Like yeah. we really do appreciate everything y'all do. Yeah. It'll make life here a little easier. Yeah, and uh we gotta get you um out if you're in town the next we'll we'll formally announce it for right now, McElwain, for you. We'll announce it. June twenty sixth. June twenty sixth. It's a Monday, so you should probably, I'll be, probably here. be here, yeah. June twenty sixth. It is my brother and sister's birthday. Oh Lord. They're twins. It is Derek Jeter's birthday. <laughs> the GOAT. I know that because I'm a diehard Yankees fan. But it is also the date that we are celebrating the birth of one Matt McElwain. Let's and go. it is our next McElwain Monday Hell at yeah. the luxurious Rusty Nail. I love uh, that place. So it's going to be awesome. So come, come and hang out. I'll buy you some $2 beers. Dude, and, I'll uh, be you there. Come, come and get fucked up over here. But y'all be sure to check out our boy, Brennan Cato. Brennan Cato 14. Brennan took it. <laughs> Look up our boy, Drayton Farley, and get out to a show. And... Uh, Tickle Brennan a little bit, fuck with him a little bit when he's taking them photos and doing them videos, and um, be sure to say <laughs> hey to him. You see him on the road, or you see him here in Nashville. Great guy to know. Um, one of we're proud to call him a friend and family here, at Outside the Round, and of course at Raised Rowdy. But appreciate you guys watching this one. I know the episode's been long lately, but it's because we've been having some good friends and some good folks on here. Uh, if there's anyone that y'all think we should have on the podcast, slide into the DMs, as they say on DM Monday, slide and in. let us know who we should have. Uh, comment on this video on YouTube and tell us who we should have on as guests. Uh, be sure to like, rate, subscribe to all the shit. Visit RaiseRally.com for more information. And, of course, shout out to the sponsors. We got our friends from Big Friendly Productions, BFP, our friends from Whale Tail Media, Saxman Studios, Wales. our boy Mitch Wallace, the king of the chicken tenders and the man with the most Chick-fil-A <laughs> points. He's probably right up there with Brennan with the most Chick-fil-A reward points. I know Mitch Wallace with the digital marketing agency. Um, and uh, be sure if you're in Nashville, come see us at one of our events at Live Oak or be on the lookout for us at mul many festivals around the country this summer. So for Sweet Boy Behind the Camera, my boy Brennan Cato, my name is Matt Brill. This has been Outside the Round. I ain't never been the kind for staying one place for too long. I ain't never been the best at saying I love you to a girl I love. Only got a couple tricks on my sleeve. They usually just make